Hello. It is so good to be coming your direction today. Amen. And we're so glad that you have allowed us to come your direction. It's our prayer that we will be a blessing to you. And we know for a fact you are a blessing to us. I would like to read from Psalm 85 and verse 6. It says, Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? And that's a question to God. But we know the answer. It's his will to say, yes, I will give you revival. And I will accept your worshiping and praising me. Faith, pray for us, please. Father God, we come to you now with open hearts, Lord, giving you praise and honor and glory for who you are. Thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And we just ask you, Lord, that you would anoint each one that's listening today, that they would receive this word, take it unto themselves, and live it, and enjoy it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Well, we hope that everything is going great for you. And as you pray and worship God, it's going to get even better as the day goes on. You know, God is so good, and if we just believe in Him and put our faith and trust in Him, there is no limit as to what God will do for us. So I'm willing to let God do all He wants to do, and I'm sure you agree with that, that you want the biggest and the best blessings that God can give you, and it's His will to do exactly that. But you need to ask Him and then believe, and you will receive. Amen. Welcome to Revelation of the Word with host Dr. and Mrs. M. E. Neal. God is so good. He blesses us. He watches over us. He helps us. And Miss Faye has a testimony that she would like to share with you. Well, as Marvin said, God is good and he answers prayer. And a few weeks ago, I came down with this dreaded, horrible COVID-19. Very sick. But God undertook. I, being a sharing person, I shared it with Marvin and our son. And so we all three were quarantined for some time. But with God's grace and his mercy, we came through this. And at our age, everybody said, oh, they're going to die. But no, God said, no, I'm not through with them yet. And we are healed with Amen. no after effects whatever, neither of the three of us have any after effects from that disease. And it's only to God that we give the glory. But we thank all of you who were praying for us. We thank you because God hears prayer and answers prayer. And know that we're praying for all of you and for anyone else that has been hurt by that disease or any other disease. Yes. God is a prayer answering God and just giving praise and glory. Amen. Thank you so very much, Miss Faye, for sharing that. Truly, God is good. Now then, I want to always give a quick review at the beginning of my message so that you can sort of make a connection with the previous program. I know you watched last week's program, so it will be easy for you to just get the connection between what was talked about last week and what's being talked about this week. But just for review's sake, just in case you may have forgotten something, I want to remind you that over the past many, many weeks, I have given you information about the fact that we are living in the last days. I have talked about the fact that we need to make sure that we are living every day just as close to the Lord as we possibly can so that whenever he does step out on the clouds of glory and say, come up hither, 
we will be ready to go and meet Jesus in the air. I have also spent some time in the previous programs talking about what's going to happen for people who are not ready to meet Jesus whenever he calls the saint to meet him in the air. And those people are going to go through what is called the tribulation period. I talked about that and the fact that we sure do not want to be left behind. Anybody viewing this program, I assure you, you do not want to miss Jesus catching the saints away. You want to be one of those saints that rises up to meet Jesus in the air. But not only did I talk about the tribulation period and how terrible that's going to be, I talked also about the work of the Antichrist. Now, that's not my favorite subject by any means, but the Bible talks about how terrible the Antichrist is going to be. And so for that reason, I gave you information about the Antichrist. My most recent topic has been about the fact that God is giving us an opportunity for a last day revival. Now, the reason he's doing that is to allow you and me as believers to make sure that we've got everything in order between us and him. But not only that, but to also occupy until Jesus does call us to meet him in the air. And when I say occupy, that means winning souls and discipling those new believers. So that's how we're to spend our time. So, yes, we need revival. The whole world needs revival. And I think the majority of the people of this world are hungry for revival. They just don't know what it is that they're hungry for. So that's the reason why we as believers need to experience revival so that we will not have any hesitation to share revival with this world. Now, when I say share revival, I'm talking about the plan of salvation. I'm talking about how Jesus died on the cross, how he was buried, and how he arose, and then how he ascended into heaven. That's what we need to share with this lost and dying world, and that the love of God is so great, so awesome, that it's God's will that nobody perish, but that all come to a knowledge of the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we, you and me, we have a responsibility, a job to carry out. We must continually make certain that the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is going around this world. Now, God has blessed Faye and me and our church because we are able to have a Roku channel as well as this TV program. We have apps for our cell phones. We have a great website, all of which have these TV programs on those different media sources. But again, there is still room for us to grow and to reach more people. It may be our, our next door neighbor, or it may be somebody on the far side of the earth. And the same is true with you. God has a ministry for you to carry out every single day until Jesus calls you home. With all of that being said, I want to continue to share with you more information about this last day revival. Here's what's going to take place we are going to need to exercise all the faith that we have and we must do it consistently. And that's really what we talked about in our last program. So if you missed last program for some reason or another, you can go back to Roku or a website and find out what we had to say about faith. The subject of the work of the Holy Spirit is what I really want to talk about today.
because this last day revival is not something that you and I must muster up on our own uh, good intentions. It's something that we must rely totally on the Holy Spirit in order to bring about. So today we're going to focus on how the work of the Holy Spirit will help you and me First of all, make sure our own lives are well prepared to meet Jesus and then how that you and I can possibly reach out to this lost and dying world, making Jesus come alive to even those that are unbelievers and then helping them to learn what thus saith the word of God. So with all of that being said, There is no way for us to experience revival without the help of the Holy Spirit. We need Him to anoint each one of us. And I am excited to tell you that this last day revival has already begun. We're just on the beginning edge of it, but we have heard of high schools right here in Tennessee that the students are experiencing revival and we praise God for that. We've also heard about churches experiencing revival and a great move of the Holy Spirit within those churches. But this is just the beginning of what God has for us in this last day revival. And again, the way that we're going to find out what those things are that God has for us is to rely totally on the Holy Spirit because He is God and He is right here, not just around us, but He is within us as believers. So we're going to start with the verse of Scripture found in John chapter 7 and verse 37, and Faye will read verses 37 through 39. And remember, this is a message that Jesus himself delivered right on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles before his crucifixion. Miss Faith? John chapter 7, beginning with verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. All right, get the picture. Jesus delivered this message prior to his crucifixion, thus definitely before his glorification. But he says that he was talking about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. And he plainly says, they that believe on him should receive. Those of us who believe on Jesus Christ should also believe in the work of the Holy Spirit, knowing that The work of the Holy Spirit is the thing, if that's the right word to use, that is going to bring about the fullness of this last day revival that we're talking about. But again, Jesus delivered this at a time that he was still here on earth. And at that point in time, he was the teacher. He was the guide. He was the one that was helping people learn about God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. But now the Holy Spirit has come. Faith, let's continue reading in John chapter 14, please, verses 16 through 18. John chapter 14, beginning verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. 
So again, Jesus is doing the talking in these verses. And he, as we well know, prayed to the heavenly father just almost constantly. And we know that he heard the voice of the father. He knew perfectly what the will of the father was for him and for us. And so he speaks to the believers then and there as he was here on earth. Jesus said to them, I am not going to be with you always on this earth as I am right now, but I have been a comforter to you and I am not going to leave you just with no hope with no comfort at all, but I'm going to send another comforter to you and this comforter will be different from me in the sense that I'm limited to time and space right now. But the one that I'm going to send to you, this comforter that is going to come for you, will be able to abide with you own and own and forever. And he's referring to the Holy Spirit. Now he says the world is not going to be able to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The world is not going to have the comfort that I am promising to you. But the world is ignoring who I am and therefore will not be capable of receiving this comforter. But know for a fact, he will dwell with you. He will comfort you. He is taking my place, but he won't be here with you for just 33 years. He will be with you on forever. And because of that, I can say, since he is my spirit, The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord Christ. And he says, because of that, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. And he did, and he will continue to do so. Let's continue in the Gospel of John, Miss Faye, verse 26 of chapter 14. John 14, 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, we all know that what Jesus was speaking there roughly 2,000 years ago was for those people then and there. But the exciting thing, what he was speaking to those people is just as applicable today for you and me. And so he is saying that he will send to us the Holy Spirit. He will come to us through the Holy Spirit. And as such, the Holy Spirit will teach us the things that we need to know regarding who Jesus is. Now I'm going to pause right there because The work of the Holy Spirit is the only means by which we can become acquainted with Jesus. It requires the Holy Spirit to draw us and convict us of our wrongdoings, our sins, and convince us that Jesus is the answer to those things, and that's exactly what the Holy Spirit does. He teaches us the things about Jesus and helps us to get a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But he doesn't stop at that point. He will bring to our remembrance things that were talked about in the Old Testament that are applicable very much in our present day life. And that's just about the whole Old Testament. But definitely, he is going to teach us and remind us of the things that we need to apply right in this present time. You see, you and I only have this present 
moment. And now we don't have that moment, but we've got another moment. We need to make sure moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, and on down the line, that we are in a right relationship with God Almighty through Jesus Christ, and that is accomplished by the work of the Holy Spirit. He teaches us and he helps us remember what we have been taught. So he reminds us of who Jesus is, what Jesus did, and what Jesus said and is still saying, and all of it is in agreement with what we have in a book called the Bible, the inspired Word of God. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, Miss Faye, and verse 26, please. John 15, 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So that verse of Scripture verifies what I was just saying, that the Holy Spirit will teach us what Jesus has said. He will help us establish that right relationship with Jesus because the Holy Spirit will tell us all about the ministry of Jesus, all about the crucifixion of Jesus, all about the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will help us know that Jesus is now in a risen form and glorified, and the Holy Spirit won't tell us the day nor the hour that Jesus is going to return, but he does tell us that we are living in the last of the last days. So we can't pinpoint a specific time on the calendar. This is when Jesus is going to return. But based on what the Holy Spirit places within our hearts through the Word of God, we can know time is short as far as the life of the saints here on this earth because we're going to find that the dead in Christ are going to be caught up and instantly we who are alive and remain are going to be caught up right behind them and we're going to ascend into heaven. Some will have been dead maybe for hundreds of years. Others of us will still be alive, walking around, occupying until Jesus comes. But at that split second, in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, everything will change for those who are dead and for those of us who are believers and are alive. We will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air and we will ascend on into heaven with Jesus. Now, Again, the reason we are able to talk about this is because Jesus did send the Holy Spirit back and we'll continue next week with more information about that. But the mere fact that we now currently have the Holy Spirit right here in this world, in our hearts, right this second, then we can be aware of the signs of the time, we can be aware of the seasons. We can be well aware of the events that are taking place round about us, all of which, when we really look at them and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and to guide us and to help us, we can know that, yes, indeed, it is the last day, it is the season that Jesus is going to return, and surely the time is short. Every single day that we live, we are one day closer to that event. But again, I am here to share with you that within my understanding of the Word of God, we all need to expect Jesus to return any day now. This could be that very day. But again, we rely on the Holy Spirit to help us keep our light shining, our lamps burning, so that we can be an influence in this lost and dying world right up until that last second before Jesus calls us away. God forbid that anybody viewing this program 
will be left behind. You've heard the information. Jesus is coming soon. And you've been told to allow the Holy Spirit to help you meet Jesus. Amen. Do you have prayer requests? Please call or write to us. You can support Revelation of the Word by first praying for God's anointing to be on this ministry. If you feel led to send a financial offering, you can send your gift to Revelation of the Word Ministries, 205 Liberty Lane, Madison, Tennessee, 37115. Everyone is invited to visit Revelation of the Word Church. Call, email, or write to Neils for more information. Now, back to Revelation of the Word. Sitting beside me is a lady that has been filled with the Holy Spirit for almost all of her life. She, at a very young age, accepted Jesus as her Savior. And then shortly after that, she was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And she has been ministering in some capacity ever since that point in time. And even while she was sick with the COVID-19, it did not stop her ministry on the phone. She continued to pray with people day after day, not talking about how she felt, but whatever need the individual who called was having in their life. And as she would pray for those people's needs, God touched her. Amen. And it's for that reason that she and I are able to be right here, right now. One of the most important things, of course, that Faye has prayed with people about is their salvation the fact that they believe in Jesus as their Savior. A lot of people know the name of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. And faith helps people know Jesus. But she also teaches people how to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so if that is somebody that I'm pointing a finger at right now, and it's you, then call Faye and she will help you understand more about the gift of the Holy Spirit and she will lead you into how to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So go to your phone right now and give Faye a call and let her be a blessing to you. And remember folks, God loves you and we do too. We really do. 